Even though many of you are on vacation right now, it doesn't seem to have slowed down the progress to Home Assistant. Again, this is a beautifully packed release. We were very excited to hear that Bluetooth support had been added to the 2022.9 updates of Home Assistant. This lets Home Assistant work with a whole new set of devices. Even more, we're excited about the latest repairs and supported brands. What's the best thing about this new release? All the significant new features and changes in the 2022.9 release are a step toward making things easier to use. Let's find out more. Upgrades to Bluetooth technology. With the release of a completely new integration design expressly for Bluetooth, Home Assistant has elevated Bluetooth to the status of a native protocol and first-class citizen. If we go back a bit, in the past, we've had integrations that used Bluetooth, like SwitchBot or MyFlora. Still, those integrations were dependent on a variety of different Bluetooth libraries. Some of them were deprecated in the most recent update because the libraries were no longer maintained. This version marks the beginning of Bluetooth's transition into its dedicated independent integration, which other integrations, such as SwitchBot, will use to interact. The result of this is a vastly improved Bluetooth experience for Home Assistant, which we would say has traditionally been its weakest area out of Zigbee, Z-Wave, and Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. Now, the Bluetooth integration supports the automatic discovery of supported Bluetooth devices and can push device updates to other integrations that use Bluetooth devices. This is an improvement over what we would say has traditionally been its weakest area. Even if we only considered the SwitchBot integration, which is a company that has a significant number of Bluetooth devices, we observe a significantly more satisfying and dependable user experience. In the first place, the SwitchBot integration now supports the SwitchBot temperature and humidity meter and the SwitchBot motion sensor as new devices. This is in addition to the SwitchBot curtain and bot, which were already supported. From what we've seen thus far, the reliability of the integration has significantly improved, which has led to a significant reduction in the number of drop connections. It's important to note that this does not immediately mean that all Bluetooth devices are suddenly working perfectly and that anything that is Bluetooth enabled can connect to Home Assistant now. Integrations must be updated to take advantage of the newly added Bluetooth integration. Although only a few devices have been updated so far, this provides a stable foundation for them to begin building. As a result, we hope to see support for an even more significant number of devices in the coming months. This is excellent stuff, and we look forward to seeing how this is expanded upon. Backup and restoration of Zigbee data as well as migration. There is now support for network backups and migration across Zigbee coordinators within the Zigbee Home Automation Integration. While jams are produced automatically, users also have the option to create them manually from within the configuration page. After restoring a backup of Home Assistant, you can reconfigure ZHA and migrate to a new Zigbee coordinator without losing any of your settings or devices that were connected before the backup was restored. This is important if your existing radio stops working or a new radio is released and you wish to migrate to it. Utilization of the processor and memory. The page about hardware has recently become a lot more intriguing. When you load the hardware page in your system menu, you'll have access to real-time information regarding the amount of memory and processor you use. These statistics will represent your whole Home Assistant's instance, providing insight into how your hardware is coping with the tasks you perform on a day-to-day -day basis. Once the website has been loaded, this will display live data for five minutes, but will not show any historical data. HomeKit over Bluetooth. In addition, the HomeKit controller integration's Bluetooth capabilities have been improved thanks to the latest version. HomeKit controller now supports adding Bluetooth-capable HomeKit devices. Generally, these would be battery-operated devices that do not require Wi-Fi, such as this EVE motion sensor or EVE weather sensor. HomeKit devices can be added to a HomeKit network through the Home app. HomeKit is a great integration that provides local control of devices. It provides a way for devices to connect that may not have a native Home Assistant integration. You don't need any Apple devices to use the HomeKit integration. It's highly reliable, quick, and works very well. However, it seems that not many people are aware of this fact. We're pleased to discover that HomeKit now also supports Bluetooth repairs. 
Repairs is the name of one of the few other features introduced in version 2022.9. This brand new page has been added to the Systems menu under the App Settings section. Repairs will search your Home Assistant for any potential difficulties or problems, and it will provide you with solutions to those issues and concerns. The issue may lie with one of the integrations that you've installed. Suppose you're using something scheduled to be removed in a subsequent release. In that case, the relevant information should be displayed under Repairs. It would be cool if this could give you an upgrade assistant that would tell you if your current configuration is compatible with the new version, including all breaking changes. This would allow you to check whether or not your configuration is compatible with the latest version before you upgrade it. One thing that would be really good to see is that it would be perfect to see this device and entity naming standardization. Have you ever added a new device to Home Assistant only to find that it gave the item a name that was utterly bizarre and contained many characters that appeared to have no significance? The purpose of 2022.8 was to make the naming of entities and devices more standardized and uniform so that they would be simpler to understand. However, about 100 integrations have already been done as part of this project including some of the more prominent ones like ZHA, Sonos, Google Cast, Calendar, WLED, and many others. It's nice to see that progress is being made. Finding integrations is easier. When looking for integrations on the Devices and Services tab, the search results have been streamlined to make them easier to find. Because of this, when you search for integration, you should see a more accurate list of compatible integrations for the thing you're searching for. This is because some integrations support multiple different brands, either because they're comparable or because they're actually the same product that has been rebranded. Streamlining Automation In 2022.9, triggers, conditions, and actions have collapsible cards. This modification lets you focus on your present task instead of having everything open. When you open your automation in the editor, all cards are flattened with an auto-generated explanation. This lets you quickly edit the portion you want. Some items and options are moved. Most are in the top right overflow menu. To rename or update your automation's description, choose Overflow, then go to Rename. Moving these elements to Overflow frees up the main editing page for your automation's essential functions. Some long requested features have been added to the forms for automating tasks. State and attribute value auto completion. You can choose from a list of known devices' states when you add a state trigger. All these are also written in your language. Now you don't have to remember the conditions. You can choose, look them up, or format the state you want to enter. Just pick a state from the list and let go of your worries. New Helper Weekly Schedule Have you ever considered putting time-based automation on a schedule to run at the same hour of the day or week? You have just lucked out, it seems. You may now simply create these schedules to develop more consistent automation and timings thanks to the arrival of Schedule Helper. This was previously not possible. The little things. Time for some of the minor but excellent additions. To begin, the Unify integration has been updated to display firmware updates for your Unify devices right inside of Home Assistant, allowing you to skip or apply updates for those Unify devices. In addition, the Unify integration has received several other improvements. Adjustments have been made to the colors used on the Maps page to make them easier to see and to improve accessibility, particularly while viewing the website in night mode. What do you think of our video? If you enjoyed this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and leave a comment saying, I subscribed. And I'll personally reply to your comment. See you next time.